Hey, welcome back to Big Board. We're having a look at Ukraine 44. It's a multi-man publishing title from one of their magazines. Uh, that special ops magazine. It's an IGS title, which basically means that it's a Japanese reinterpretation or a Japanese uh, designed game that's been translated uh, by Adam Starkweather to uh, be played by us round-eyed white chappies. <clears throat> so, I think we all know the little historical background here. I'll put a link in the video for you to go read up on this, but basically we've got a, a pocket uh, that's been formed here and the objective is for the Germans, uh, the German First Panzer Army to extricate itself basically via this uh, Kamenets Pol uh, Poldusky uh, area and get across the Denster River and, you know, save itself. Uh, back in 44, 1944, this was quite the epic uh, exit. And uh, there was a lot of, uh, you know, it's being represented in other games. I think as Hube's Pocket is one of the titles that perhaps you've heard of or one of the campaigns you've heard of to represent that. At least that's what I believe. So that's the, that's the little 10 second snippet. So I'm a little bit distracted this morning. So uh, I'm trying to, trying to get through this so that you can uh, understand a little bit about this game and then we'll, we'll keep playing. We're right at the mobile or what I would call the mech, uh, mech movement phase, which is the last movement phase in the German half of the turn at the beginning of turn five. So March 27th. Uh, 1944. Game plays very quickly and uh, it's quite an interesting dynamic. Once again, even though it's 44, you have, uh, and, and when you play, you know, you're you supposed to play with these units face up like this so that it's hidden movement. I'm obviously playing it exposed since I'm playing it solo. I don't know that that would make too much difference other than I think as the German player, you can do a little more. It's, it's a little more risky trying to jump on one of these these weaker units if you don't know whether it's a two or a three or a four. So you can't get exact odds potentially, but pretty much you're going to do roughly the same amount of damage anyway because the, the attack tables really only go, you know, it's, it's one to one through four to one is where it matters. Uh, there's no odds after four to one and it's a D6 uh, results. And if you had say seven to one, then you would add three to the die roll. Then the difference between the the odd shifts. So uh, no matter what, you're going to lose a step. No matter what, you're probably going to kill a step. It just depends on if you're if you're attacking at less than one to one, then you're you're losing more as the attacker, and then you're inflicting upon the defender. So very straightforward and sim simple uh, combat me mechanic. These uh, step loss markers uh, detract from both attack and defense, but you're not dead until the defense number is reached. So here I would have. 10, uh, 10 potential steps or, or combat losses to lose. Here I would have nine combat losses to lose. But if I'm a little uh, Soviet division here, I only have three to lose. Well, it's very easy to happen. So you're guaranteed to lose one in every combat, whether you're attacking or, or defending. So you kind of have to have a mass of uh, divisions when you're attacking a German unit as the Russian player. So that if you do take more than well you're actually never going to take more than one loss as the attacker but you're going to have one unit that's going to absorb the losses until it's dead or whatever the case may be and then uh then bring in a fresh one right uh for the germans you've got to be selective about where you're going to attack and what you're going to attack because every attack you do you're going to lose a step off of one of these guys now the germans have much higher defensive values so they have resilience and they'll last longer but when you lose a step, you also lose a factor off your combat attack. So, you know, this five, this infantry division uh, has gone, is going to go from a five to a four on offense and to a nine on defense. So while it can hang around for a while, eventually it's not going to be able to participate in the combats when it, once it's down to zero. And when it's down to zero, then it loses its effectiveness as a supporting combat unit because you can't put zero combat units into, into attack, I don't believe. So the whole idea here is we're doing a VP count on step losses and uh, 
capturing of cities. Uh, there's one, two, three, uh, Chernovsky. Chernovsky is down here. Uh, so you've got to capture these, uh, capture these cities, protect this, uh, this line here, which has been bridged and gets bridged turn one because the, the Russians are right there. The 40th Army is right here and they, they sorry, right here and they start the game uh, at the bridge and just jump across. It's kind of rude, but uh, that is what it is. Now, because you have a, a choice, either combat and move or move and combat, you get to do that in your turn as the Germans, uh, that gives you some interesting opportunities. Uh, you then will then get a mobile uh, movement phase, which is all mech units basically get to move again. So you're going to get to move and fight or fight and then move. And then you're going to have a second, uh, second movement for mech units. Now I've got myself in a few pickles here and there where we have uh, forces that uh, weren't able to do the secondary move. And they've become somewhat isolated. We've also got a few other, a few other units over here, just here in the glare right there, that are they're in trouble. Both sides are feels to me. Both sides are encouraged to attack here. If you're not attacking, you're not moving. You're not really able to move forward. And as the Soviets, you can just attrit away these German forces. And as the Germans, you want to start smacking these smaller, weaker units, these three twos and five threes, you need to start knocking them out of the game so that you can, uh, so there's less force down here uh, that's gonna be, you know, coming across this, trying to come across this river at some point. No stacking in this game, stacking is enforced at all times. So that adds some uh, nuance to it, makes it a little bit hard for the Russians to get around, makes it difficult for the Germans to make sure that if they want to stay on the road and use the road, that they have to uh, make sure you move the units in the right order. It's a little bit of a pain in the ass, but it's not. I can see why they're, they're doing it the way they're doing it. Playing solo makes it easy. If I make a mistake, I can just say, well, I meant to move this guy first, and then I go ahead and move that guy uh, through the unit. Uh, so it's just it's just rather than, you know, putting it back and then moving it again later. Uh, it's deadly. This is a deadly game. It's very fast playing. Uh, it's only taken me about an hour uh, or so, or maybe, maybe I don't know, I've kind of played this over the course of the evening last night while I was doing some other things. But I got four turns, most of, most of four turns done in about an hour. And I've been at this for another 20 or 30 minutes and here and where I had to make some think about some choices that were being made got some units out of supply over here supply is pretty harsh uh, you're out of supply if you're five more than five hexes away back to a supply source which is you know somewhere off map and uh then you become isolated and then you start uh, either dying or losing effectiveness uh, losing uh, taking attrition as the case may be in essence um Interesting strategy here, whether you you know collapse back or try and hold the line. Uh, when the game first starts, the you know the Russians can really start pushing all the way over here, and you think, well, there's no way you're going to be able to stop them. But with this mobile mech move business, you're able to lunge some forces into play, uh, try and slow the Russians down a little bit, which we, which we've done over here. So, all in all, just first blush, five turns in uh, of a twelve turn game, I'd say it's pretty interesting. I, I do question, based on the, t the time scale of daily turns, the ability of the Germans to be as mobile and effective as they are. I, I mean, we're, we're, we're wiping out the equivalent of divisions at a time here. So I've taken out three, four, five, six divisions of basically infantry units for the loss of one division of my own. And of course, a number of other step losses as we go around. Um, clearly, I'm going to lose this division here. Uh, I'm wondering about the the the, the, na the nature of that uh, sort of cadence of battle and tempo of battle. Whether that's you know realistically what was going on here, whether it was really that brutal and that uh, that sort of volume of uh, of violence uh, being being forced upon each other. Who knows, maybe that's what it was like. I'll have to do a little more history digging. But anyway, that's kind of the game. Uh, pretty interesting stuff. Fast player, it's kind of fun. Uh, I will be playing this opposed in 
three or four weeks against one of my buddies online, Steve. Uh, we're going to jump into this, and I think it, uh, it's a pretty straightforward game. Se- seven or eight pages of rules, good, clear, clean uh, rule descriptions. It's, everything's well-defined, simple sequence of play, nice artwork, nice counters. The hidden movement thing is kind of a kind of a beat down because you've got to flip everything over. But I imagine in Vassal, uh, if the Vassal module is done correctly, we'll be able to have, I'll be able to see my factors and he won't. So that'll make uh, it'll make life easier for everybody uh, when you're playing versus literally if we we're playing opposed, everything will be face down and you'll be flipping units all the time trying to work out what's what, which is just n- not a good user interface uh, mechanic. Don't really know that you need to have hidden movement. You know what's armor, you know what's infantry anyway, because it's got the icon here. Really all we're dealing with is a, a variance in some defense factors from four down to two. That's kind of the, the range on the infantry units and the guards units, the armored units are all nine or 10 in defense, unless they're monster sized ones. There's one big, this big infantry guard force to core, right? Anyway. That's a quick overview. We'll keep playing. We'll check in more. Might try and do some live play later on. We'll see how we do. Take it easy.